for us. We can say we shall all complete freedom from our shortcomings. It doesn't matter that we may not attain a state of perfection or complete community in our lifetime. The ability to contemplate, distract vision and meditate upon each other and process this in their own right. We are being changed. We not only heard about the miracle of recovery, we are becoming living, reading a sample of what the power of the Nakhogram can do. The spiritual life has ceased to be a theory we hear about in meetings. It is now becoming a tangible reality. We can see a miracle simply by looking in the mirror. The God of our understanding has taken us from spiritually unconscious, open addicts to spiritually aware, recovering addicts eager to live. Although we reached this point, the damage caused by our shortcomings needs to be addressed. Desire of continuing recovery and freedom, we go on to spend a gentle bit to make amends for the damage we caused. Step 8. Session 2. We made a list of all persons we had turned and became willing to make amends to them all. In the previous steps, we began to make peace with our higher power and with ourselves. In the eighth step, we begin the process of making peace with others. By acting on our character defects, we inflict upon one ourselves and those around us. In the seventh step, we ask our higher power to remove our shortcomings. However, in order to think to freedom from our defects, we need to accept responsibility for them. We need to do whatever we can to repair the harm we done. In step 8, we begin to rectify our wrongs. We begin to accept responsibility for our actions by listing all the people we have harmed and by becoming willing to make amends to them all. While our efforts to make amends may make a difference in the life of those we have harmed, this process has its greatest impact on our own lives. Our objective is to begin clearing away the damage we done so that we can continue with our spiritual awakening. By the time we work our way through the process of making amends, we will surely be astounded by the level of freedom we feel. We are involved in a process designed to free us from our past so that we are able to live fully in the present. Many of us are haunted by memories of our mistreatment of others. Those memories can creep up on us without warning. Our shame and remorse over our past actions are so deep that these recollections can cause us to be unbearable beings. We want to be free of such beings. We begin by making a list of the people we've harmed. Just thinking about our list may threaten us. We may be afraid that we've done so much damage.
damage next we can never repair it. But we may be afraid of facing the people we encounter. We find ourselves wondering how our lands will be the same. Our most hopeful projection probably entail being absorbed out of any wrongdoing. Our most nightmarish expectation may involve someone refusing to accept our romance, preferring instead to take revenge. Most of us have fully vivid imaginations. But it is not the time to get ahead of ourselves. We must avoid projections, either negative or positive, about actually making our amends. We are on the eighth step, not the ninth step. At this point, we delay this and becoming willing to make amends are our only concerns. Working the previous steps can prepare us for the willingness we need to begin the next step. We honestly assess the exact nature of our needs and examine how our action affected others. It was not easy to admit our wrongs. Step. 
Venus seven step. We followed our personal relationship with our higher power by asking for freedom from our shortcomings. Now we just let her to provide us with whatever we need to work for each step. Our commitment to recovery includes becoming ready to go as far as we must. Our power is working in our lives, preparing us to be of service to others. The changes brought about by that power are evidenced by our changing attitudes and actions. We are the well of the ability to choose spiritual principles over character defects and recovery over addiction. We have a fresh outlook on life, and we know that we are responsible for what we do. We no longer feel constant regret over the harm we cut in the past. Simply understanding how badly we hurt people, being truly sorry for the pain we cut, and becoming willing to let them know of our desire to make things right out of the peace to freedom from our past. Though we have yet to make peace with others, we've come a long way toward making peace with ourselves. With our new perspective, our trust in the God of our understanding, and our willingness, we go on to step 9. Say she Step 9. Say she we make direct commands to do wherever possible, except when to do so will injure them or others. Now that we are willing to make amends to all the people we harm, we put our willingness into action by working the ninth step. We involve in a process that takes us from awareness of our wrongs and the complete slavery to a growing freedom from those conflicts and toward the serenity we are seeking. This process has come on us to examine our lives, identify our character defects, and become aware of how we found others when we entered on those defects. Now we must do everything we can to repair the harm we cause. We have our exit list, and we know what we have to do. However, knowing and doing are two different things. We may have a purposely plan for making our demands, but when the moment arrives, find ourselves overwhelmed by fear and feel unable to go on. We may be afraid of how our demands will be received. We may be worried that someone will retaliate on the other hand. We may be covering a secret hope that we may be exposed from our responsibilities. We cannot base our willingness on the expectation that we won't actually have to make restitution. For each of our men, every possibility exists. From being carefully accountable to being completely exposed, we must 